Saint Joseph is one of the most mysterious but at the same time most powerful chains, saints in the church history. And yet very little is known about him. In fact, there is one very important secret in the life of Saint Joseph about Saint Joseph which is entirely orthodox yet unknown to most Catholics. And that is what we'll be talking about today. But before we enter into the origin of this mysterious saint, we have to first understand who was he, what was his mission. So Father Francois Bande, what was the role of Saint Joseph? Why was Saint Joseph created by God? Well, above all, we should always remember that Saint Joseph is number two. He's the second most important saint in the world, in the history of the world. Of course, our Lord Jesus Christ, he is sanctity. He's God. So he's not considered here when I say he's Saint Joseph, the second most important saint, because Jesus is, is sanctity. But Our Lady is the most important. She's number one. Yeah. She's number one saint. Saint Joseph is number two. So this is why St. Joseph is important. We have to learn to understand St. Joseph. We, over all these centuries of the church, we've spoken and we've been able to de develop a lot on who was the mother of God, who was Mary. But St. Joseph was a little bit um, forgotten in all of these studies, in all of these, um, um, let's say, uh, pious devotions. St. Joseph has maybe been put on, on, an, um, on, an, on a second scale, but he nevertheless is very important, especially in today's world where there's a crisis of manlyhood where fatherly, uh, father, um, the father figure is, is today a little bit, um, let's say, uh, under, um, under, uh, undervalued. undervalued. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So this is why we should rediscover um, who St. Joseph is. So Father, St. Joseph, of course, you mentioned that the role that he has and had in history has many times been undervalued. And that is, I guess we can understand it similar to what St. Louis says about Our Lady. If right in the beginning of the church, if Our Lady's figure was shown in all its brilliance, in a certain sense, people would have not have given the necessary importance to our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. It was necessary for the Christology to be totally developed. And over the centuries, the devotion to Our Lady became stronger and stronger. I guess, can we say that now it's the turn of St. Joseph in a similar sense, that once Our Lady's figure has reached uh, a certain a certain apex, not the entire height, but people have understood Our Lady, her figure, her her sanctity is better understood today. Maybe it's the St. Joseph's turn to start shining more and more. Is that it? I think they go hand in hand. I think if we want Our Lady to be more known, glorified, and loved, we also have to learn who is St. Joseph because they're, they're, they're together. They're, they're a couple. They're, they're the Holy Family. Let's always remember that the Holy Family c consists of three persons. So we have Joseph, we have Mary, and we have Jesus. So we have to kind of always um, um, take them in a, um, in, in a, in a holistic um, perspective in order, in order to better understand and to love our Lord Jesus Christ, to better, to better serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let's learn who his parents are. So this is, this is why I think St. Joseph is very important because, well, he um, is the head of the family. He's the head of the Holy Family. And uh, as the head, therefore, um, he, he has the authority over the Holy Family uh, here on earth, yeah. of course. Our Lady's role in the Holy Family. What is Our Lady's role? Well, if St. Joseph is the head, Our Lady is the heart. <laughs> She's the one that unites everything. And of course, in, in, in the sphere of grace, our Lord Jesus Christ is first, you see. So, um, so I, think, I think here it's, um, it's something that we, uh, we should maybe consider. And that's why I would like to say that, well, this podcast is all about maxima maximalizing. How do you say that in English? Ma Ma maximalize. Maximalize. Thank maximize you. Maximizing and minimalizing. To, yeah. To, I think he, this podcast is to maximize Saint Joseph, yeah. all right? Uh, unfortunately, we, we like to, to, many, many people in, in our Catholic um, church like to minimize, minimize Saint Joseph and kind of maybe develop and, and elaborate the fact that he was, he was a carpenter. He was a carpenter. That's his he title, was, yes, yeah, yes. He, he, it, that was his trade, all right? But that wasn't his principal mission. They're like calling St. Paul a tent maker. He was a tent maker, I agree, but then he was much more than that. There we go. So that's why we have to maximize St. Joseph and, and understand that he was created by God 
in order to form the child Jesus, in order to kind of care for the child Jesus. Now, that's a mission in itself. Okay, okay. So, mm -hmm. so going back to this maximization of the figure of St. Joseph, I would like here to be audacious and to say that, well, St. Joseph has a special role that nobody else has, all right? And that's the, 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 the role of being a just man, to being awesome. a righteous man, caring for the infant Jesus. And so he's a figure, he's a figure of a fatherly, a father here on earth that is going to protect the infant Jesus, that's going to uh, nourish the infant Jesus, going to, to um, help the infer, infant Jesus, that's going to care for the infant Jesus along with his holy wife, Our Lady. First Father, of course, we've heard a lot that St. Joseph is the, is the patron of good deaths. Yes, that's so true. We had talk. We are here to talk about the origin of Saint Joseph. But let us go to his end. We know that he is a patron of good deaths. Yes. But why would you? Why do you think God required or God desired because our Lord Jesus Christ, His Son uh, and Saint Joseph's son, was God? He could have made Saint Joseph live for many more years on this earth than he did. Why was it necessary for Saint Joseph to die, to, to die, to pass and away. to disappear before our Lord's yes. public life began and His crucifixion and Calvary began? In 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 Holy Scripture, there's 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 very little about Saint Joseph. So there's only two um, evangelists that speak about Saint Joseph. So we have Saint Matthew, all right, uh, in his first chapter in the infancy narration, and we have Saint Luke also that speak and um, allude to St. Joseph. Um, and when, when our Lord begins his, um, his, public, um, his public mission, um, then at that time, we don't hear about St. Joseph anymore. So that's why tradition says that, well, before our Lord began his public mission, St. Joseph had also already passed away. Mm -hmm. And he is the patron of good, of, um, of good death because, well, passing away in the arms of Our Lady, the Blessed Mother, the Blessed Holy Virgin, and the arms of, of Jesus, well, you can't, you can't pass away in, in any, any better way than that, right? Yeah. So that's why he is considered uh, the patron saint of holy death because tradition, the pious tradition, is that uh, St. Joseph, therefore, passed away before the beginning of the mission of our Lord. Now, why is that? And it's interesting because um, there are um, scholars, there are saints, um, um, theologians that, that have elaborated on that, and they believe, all right, that it, it's because of his fatherly figure, because a father would never allow for his son to have been persecuted like Jesus was persecuted. It's a father would have stood way. up. Yes, a father would yeah. have stood up. Just so because of, his, of that manlyhood in St. Joseph, being a defender, being a protector, therefore God um, had to take him away, had to bring him to heaven. Because St. Joseph, uh, maybe he would not have... Um, um, let's say um, he would not have crossed his arms, let's say, and allowed for his son to have been persecuted and crucified like he was. So I guess for our redemption, it was necessary for our Lord to fulfill his mission. It was necessary that St. Joseph's mission should already have reached its completion because he had yes. to stop protecting. Yeah. Yes. So that our Lord, yeah. A little bit like St. John the Baptist, right? Yeah. Saint John the Baptist also he had to be he had to be taken away um, so that Jesus could uh, could grow. Mm -hmm. you see, so Saint Joseph had to be taken away so that well the 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 passion may may occur. Yeah. So Father, now I think we all have a good idea about Saint Joseph's mission as such. What you mentioned till now, he had a very high mission as a head of the Holy Family, yes. as a spouse of Mary, and as the father the foster father of Jesus. Right. That's excellent. So we know that our Lord Jesus Christ, he, or better, Our Lady, because of her sublime mission, God thought of her from all eternity, preserved her from original sin. She had an immaculate conception before she was born. All of this in, in function of her mission of being the mother of God. Now, what was the origin of St. Joseph? Mm -hmm. Was it that God wanted somebody to marry Our Lady so she could be a virgin and then he walked around the, on the square. The first person he found was Joseph. He took him in or how do you think was the origin of St. Joseph in this sense? Well, there's a pious, um, there's a pious uh, um, belief that, um, well, this is not a pious belief. This is a dogma, all right, that Our Lady Mary was conceived without sin. 
Yeah. This is a dogma, and and this is a beautiful. This is a honoring Our Lady, and she. This is a very um, and this is this um, privilege. This is a privilege that Our Lady received of being conceived without sin, and this is unique to Our Lady, and there's nobody else that compares uh, or that can even come close to this uh, to this privilege that was given to our lady this is actually given in a encyclica um encyclical called ineffabilis deus mm-hmm. ineffabilis deus where it's it is written that um by a singular grace and privilege granted by almighty god our lady was preserved from original sin so this is this is the beauty this is the the sanctity this is the holiness of our blessed mother but as I was saying in the beginning of this podcast, I'm a maximalistic. I'm maximalistic with regards to saints. And I like to think of St. Joseph, who also was conceived without sin. This is what actually our, our founder, Monsignor Jean uh, Cla, he, um, he uh, actually um, um, presents in his book uh, here that we have. All right, St. Joseph. It's called St. Joseph, Who Really Knows Him? And this was published just a few few months ago, and it was published for the 400th anniversary of the consecration of Canada to St. Joseph. This is going to be launched uh, in in March. uh, Both the brothers here, Brother brother Morgan is uh, Canadian. Morgan Joseph Dunn is Canadian. Father Bande is Canadian as well. Exactly. And and Canada was consecrated to St. Joseph in the year um, 1624. Mm-hmm. Um, when when the colony of Canada was very very weak and very uh, um, uh, let's say uh, vulnerable to uh, to the natives who were um, not understanding the presence of uh, of the French at the time um, from Europe and and they were at war uh, being incited actually they were being encouraged by the um, the Dutch who were down south uh, giving them. Um, well, uh, privileges or let's say promises if they destroyed the French colony up north, which was in Canada at the time. And so um, the governor at the time, if I don't remember, if I remember well, the governor at the time was uh, Le Sieur de Frontenac, Le Marquis de Frontenac, I believe. He, um, he saw the, uh, the danger of having, uh, of having uh, his small colony uh, maybe overrun by the natives that were at war with him. So he, um, in, the front of, in the front of danger of being overrun and maybe destroyed, he therefore called the, um, the, uh, the Franciscan friars that were there at the time, the Ricolet, and he consecrated. He asked the friars, let's consecrate our small colony to St. Joseph, who's protector of the Holy Family, and that he also be a protector of this small colony. I guess the Catholic faith in Canada depended on this in a big measure, no? because the Dutch were not Catholics anymore. They were Protestants, right? They were, yes, they were Protestant. Unfortunately, they were in New York at the time, mm-hmm. which called, which was called uh, York, and they were um, inciting uh, the Indians uh, against the Catholics. So, um, so um, Saint Joseph, being the protector of the Holy Family, the protector also of the Church. So uh, Fontenac, the governor, went in and decided, well, let's let's consecrate this small colony to Saint Joseph for his protection. And well, Lord behold, they were protected and they were able to come at peace with the Indians. And 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 Canada today uh, is a flourishing and very strong country. So, so, so we see we see here um, the role of Saint Joseph um, in. In, in so many aspects of, of our lives. And so, so this is why we're going to be publishing this book. The, bub- the book actually was published, all right? So if you want to acquire it, all right, it'll be uh, available um, here. We'll have um, a link below, Father. The link of we'll this. have a link here below. And, and in this book, our founder uh, wrote this book a few years ago. It's the original um, is in Portuguese. And, uh, and he defends the fact that St. Joseph was conceived um, uh, um, well, without original sin. Now, there is a pious uh, belief that Saint Joseph was born without original sin. You see, this this is this is also very good. But our our founder goes a little bit further. He says, well, without diminishing the privilege of our Blessed Mother Mary, without um, um, diminishing the fact that that she is the only one that has this privilege, that 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 she um, she is. Uh, um, unique, I singular guess. unique. There we go, uh, brother, singular brother John. I, I, I just, I just like to um, to think that you know Saint Joseph has a very special origin, and that very special origin of Saint Joseph is um, um, is born in the love of God for His divine Son Jesus, where 
his earthly father was conceived without sin. You see, this is this may be sound this may sound heretical to some people, but but I would I would say that this um, this concept this idea is comes from 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 our heart from the heart of our founder, um, wanting to 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 um, to better understand the special mission of Saint Joseph by trying to better understand his origin. All right, and and wanting to believe that he was conceived without sin. Of course, we submit ourselves to the teachings of the church. You know, Monsignor Jean explains in his book very well that, uh, you know, he, he, he doesn't want to be heretical in any way, but he wants to be maximalistic with regards to this figure of father, earthly father of Jesus. Let's remember that our Lord is, is God. So as God, he, he, he must have conceived of, of, of very, very holy and pure parents. So that's why it's interesting to think and mm -hmm. to believe and to to we we'd like to 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 see that Saint Joseph all right would have a special um let's say uh, um privilege uh, below the privilege of our lady of course our lady she is unique yeah uh, in her immaculate I guess conception. in any case Saint Joseph by by the doctrine of the universal mediation even Saint Joseph's immaculate conception he got it through our lady if it wasn't for our ladies, beautiful. Marriage. There we go. I think that 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 will kind of um, make things a little bit clearer. Yes, our our Saint Joseph's Immaculate Conception comes from the Immaculate Conception of Our Lady. Yeah, you touched on it, Father, but you didn't say exactly why. Why was Saint Joseph? Why do we believe? I also believe that, of course, we don't know how to put it into words. That Saint Joseph was also conceived immaculately. Of course, of course, in a lesser way than Our Lady. Somehow in the future, maybe the church will be able to put this into perfect terms. But why did God, why do we believe that God must have given St. Joseph also this privilege? Because two of the great privileges of St. Joseph is to be the spouse of Our Lady and also to be the father of the child Jesus. The earthly father of the child Jesus, yes. So if he is the spouse of Our Lady and the father of our child Jesus, why is it fitting for him also to have been created immaculately? Well, out of love and out of respect for God in the person of Jesus Christ. You see, I think that um, God being purity, God being goodness, God being, being truth, um, he could only um, con be conceived or, or, or yes, in, in the virginal bosom of our blessed mother Mary and having as uh, earthly father here also a very immaculate soul person in, in the person of, of St. Joseph. So I think out of, uh, out of respect, out of love, and out of admiration for this purity, um, it's interesting, it would be nice, it would be beautiful, I mean, to, 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 to say, to be able to better understand St. Joseph's mission um, by seeing his origin, his holy origin, immaculate origin. So you basically, God, God the Father wanted to give his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the most perfect Father possible. And God cannot do anything less perfect. So if he chose That's to give him... That's maximalistic. Very good, brother. Most perfect mother. <laughs> Let's be maximalistic Christians, mm -hmm. Catholics, mm -hmm. always always wanting the best for God, for Christ, for Our Lady, for St. Joseph. I think we, we have to want to try to, to, to always elevate things. Why? Because that gives us hope, mm -hmm. you see? And that helps us also practice virtue. That's why, actually, um, we uh, we should always uh, be in awe um, in front of these uh, truths and and these beauty beautiful aspects of our of our faith because this is what this is what is 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 reserved for us also. <laughs> Let us remember that when we um, are going to be introduced into heaven um, with God's uh, um, mercy, mercy. Um, we are we are also going to be pure. Yeah. We are going to also be, uh, well, we're going to be saints. So we have to want that. We have to desire. We have to admire uh, uh, holiness. And we have to be maximalistic in understanding that holiness is really immaculate. Mm -hmm. Another very beautiful no, sorry. Go ahead, beautiful thought from St. Saint Louis Maria King G. Montfort. He says that Our Lady was God's earthly paradise. Yes. Sorry, no. Our Lady was God's paradise. Our Lady Just like God's paradise. he created Adam and Eve, and then 
introduced them into paradise, an earthly paradise for man. For man, God's paradise was Our Lady Saint Louis. He he makes this anal gives this analogy. Mm, yeah. And in the book, Monsignor Joan, he also basing himself on this analogy because what happened after Adam and Eve sinned? They were expelled, expelled or exposed. Expelled, Brother Nimish. Expelled. expelled. They were expelled from, um, from paradise. Yeah. And what did God, who did God put at the doors or the gates of paradise to God paradise? Two angels. So if he put two angels, immaculate they beings, or says you're perfect at the gate beings, of yeah. at the gates of paradise, who is he going to choose to protect his paradise, which is Our Lady, it's to much be the more guardian to the paradise of the okay. guardian of his paradise, which is Our Lady, and it was Saint Joseph. So if two angels protected the earthly paradise, Saint Joseph had to, in some sense, have the same moral statue stature as these two angels. Because Our Lady, even greater. Our Lady is above angels and saints. Yeah. So Saint Joseph also has to be above angels and saints. So Father, God was always throughout history we see uh, all uh, let's put it like this: we see marriages which are arranged by God. When God created Eve next to Adam, He yes. made a proportion between Eve and Adam. Yes. And whenever there has been a, a true marriage according to the will of God, God always creates a certain parity, a certain proportion between the spouses. So true. So yeah, true. Another point. Yeah. Yeah. How could somebody who was who had all the, let's say, all the bad effects of concupiscence in his soul, all the effects of the original sin, with all the, uh, let's say, the impulses of the flesh yeah, and the all impulses, those things, cetera, yes. how could somebody be like that and take care of Our Lady? I mean, they would live in the, under the same roof. They would be talking, uh, constant contact with each take other. Take care of Our Lady. Imagine taking care of the Lord Jesus, the yeah. child Jesus. The intimacy that he needed to have Right. When you were on the way to Bethlehem, just him and Our Lady during days, he had to take care of Our Lady when she was on the donkey with Our Lord Jesus Christ. So, of course, Our Lord came to save sinners. Mm -hmm. It's true. He does not get, uh, he does not feel a repulse towards sinners. But for himself, God created a paradise that is Our Lady. And the person who was going to complete Our Lady, that person needed to be somebody who had proportion, who had to be part of the paradise. There we go. So beautiful argument. Thank you, Brother John. Um, kind of uh, justifying our pious belief that Saint Joseph was conceived without sin. Yeah. You see, it's um, it's 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 also interesting to um, to always uh, remember that the reason why we want to always elevate uh, the holiness of um, of um, of the saints, especially the holiness of, of our Blessed Mother Mary and the holiness of St. Joseph is because that helps us understand our own lack of holiness. Um, as a priest, you know, I, I spend many hours a day um, having the grace to confess. There in my little chapel there in St. Agnes, um, I, um, I visit many families there, um, especially now during, uh, during Lent and, and for, in, you know, for Easter and everything. So I'm visiting a lot of families to bless and to console them and to, to bring them uh, some consolation and, 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 and blessings. And, and, I, and, and I, many, many ask me to... to receive them in confession. But some of them, when they, they kneel and they ask for confession, they come and they say, well, Father, you know, I, I, I ask forgiveness, but I don't know what I did wrong. You know, they have difficulty in understanding what they've, what they've done that was wrong, but they want to ask forgiveness, but, but they don't know where they've sinned. Yeah. You see? Could it be that they don't have a model, Father? Why do, why do they not know? Well, there you go. Thank you very bro much, Brother Morgan. That's exactly where I was getting getting at. Is because sometimes they have a minimalized, minimalized, minimalistic, minimalistic <laughs> view of holiness. Yeah. You see, they see saints as as other people like themselves. You see, um, uh, saint, and so they they kind of put the saints on a horizontal level, and so they don't they don't actually um, uh, dwell into um, and to real holiness and to what it is to be yeah. pure, what it is to be. Fine. If I didn't rob, I didn't kill. That's fine. That's good enough. There's nothing more than that. There we go. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, so this is why one more reason for us to, um, to put St. Joseph on, on, on this high level of holiness um, f- because of his mission, being, being the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, being the husband of Mary. St. Joseph, therefore, is a model, and, and we should learn from him because he was a just man. He was a righteous man. He was a, he had a trade, he of honorable trade, a carpenter, which was um, w- which was the the means that he used to to bring bread on the table for the holy family. But but his main mission was to form the child Jesus. So to be a model of prayer, to be a model of devotion, to be a model of protection. You see, Saint Joseph, therefore, so so he's a model for all of us to understand well. Where are our failings? You know, well, I fail sometimes in giving a good example, example to my children. You see, I fail sometimes in, in, in despairing or, or, or sometimes, you know, not being always uh, very, very, um, let's say, uh, um, trustworthy in what I do or, or honest in what I say. Mm-hmm. You see, so St. Joseph is a model. Yeah. And, so, and so this is why I would like to, to, to introduce St. Joseph to my, to my community, to my parish, to, all of, to the whole world as a model of holiness, of uprightness, of, um, of goodness. He's a, he's a model of, uh, St. Joseph is a model of piety and, and, and humility. He's always, he's so discreet in Holy Scripture, do you, right? Do you have any miracles to tell us of St. Joseph or, or facts from his life that maybe can put that into, into well, um, yeah, to kind of uh, exemplify. Uh, exemplify. Well, um, yes, uh, there's a there's a beautiful being Canadian, of course. Uh, um, I don't know if our listeners here know, but the the greatest biggest uh, shrine dedicated to Saint Joseph in the world is found in Canada. Uh, being the patron saint of Canada. So um, the faithful there, the Catholics in Canada, um, with the help of, of St. Joseph, of course, they built the greatest shrine that exists in the world to St. Joseph, and that's St. Joseph's Oratory in the city of Montreal. Okay. It's a huge shrine, and it was inspired by a holy man called Brother André. And Brother André. And so at one point, Brother André, he was a, a, a miracle worker, all right? He, he would do a lot of miracles, always through the intercession of St. Joseph, <laughs> always. So there's a, in the Basilica today, this huge shrine, there's a, um, there's a crypt with all of the, uh, the canes. And the and crutches. The crutches. And the, yeah, I've been there? Yes, I've been there, yes. There's like hundreds of them, if not thousands, thousands. of these crutches. I think crutches. there's at least thousands. Thousands it's of incredible. crutches that, that this miracle worker, um, Brother André, would perform under the patronage of St. Joseph. Always Brother André was the doorkeeper. He was the doorkeeper, yes. So, um, so there's a beautiful um, story there of uh, uh, Brother André was, um, was therefore had set all the foundations of this huge basilica, all right, like really big on, on Mount Royal. It's in the, in the middle of the city. And so St. Brother, Brother André had, had, um, was able to get the foundations, the walls going up, all right, of this huge basilica, but then funds ran out for the roof. He didn't have a roof. And it was, uh, it was getting serious because uh, winter was approaching. And as everybody knows from North America, winters in North America are very, very serious. It, it goes below zero and, uh, and the cold can start, um, well, um, dis- destroying yeah. the foundation or the wall if it's not well protected. Oh, okay. uh, it'll, it'll, it'll break the wall, right? Especially in those times, right? They don't have all of the... Yeah. techniques that we techniques have today that we yeah. have today right so uh, so the 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 construction uh, workers came up to saint joe to say to brother andre and said brother andre you know we have to stop working we, we there's no more funds to to order the the structure for the uh, for the roof so so brother andre went and thought a little bit looked at his statue of saint joseph and he said the statue that that would perform miracles yeah. right the little statue that would perform miracles so he looked at the statue and he told the workers Take the statue and put him in the middle of the construction site. And if St. Joseph wants a roof for his head, he'll find the funds to put that roof over his head. And Lord that behold, he blocked me with the seat. <laughs> Lord behold, that, that week, all right, someone came around, people were, were, were moved by grace, and the funds came and the roof was put on. Beautiful, fun. A beautiful example, especially you mentioned sometimes people enter into despair. We should never enter into despair because when we 
see ourselves before a situation which is impossible yes. to overcome, it's simply pray to St. Joseph that he is going to provide a roof <laughs> over our head or what we need to get out of that that situation that we're in. Exactly. Very beautiful. Uh, St. Joseph always wins with something very beautiful in his life. I mean, everything that could, you see what we know about him in scripture, anything that could go wrong, actually didn't go wrong. Looks like he had almost failed his mission. He was supposed to take care of our Lord when our Lord was supposed to be born. He didn't even have a house, but he found a, a place mm. when everything, it seems that almost God was against him. It seemed to be, might have seemed to him at that moment. He was trying his best and all the doors were closed. He finds a cave and everything works out. The angels come there and he finds a place which is worthy to house the creator of the universe. Our Lord seems to have lost, been lost when he was 12 years old. St. Joseph goes back, gets him. Things seem to go wrong many times, but St. Joseph always wins. Well, imagine when um, St. Joseph went and perceived that Our Lady was with child. Yeah. And he knew that it wasn't his child. Yeah. You see, in St. Matthew, it, it's, it's, it's a tragic moment. St. Jo Joseph, uh, God did not reveal everything to St. Joseph. So St. Joseph was left in a perplexity, you know. Why is that, Father? Well, it's, 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 it's part of, I think, living uh, a life of abandonment. We, we have to learn to surrender to God. We can't try to understand everything, you see, because God is infinite. So, so St. Joseph, all right, of course, he had, pl he had made plans for his future family. And he had made plans for our Blessed Mother that was promised to him in marriage. And, uh, but then all of a sudden, our Blessed Mother, she's with child. So he was, he was humbled because he knew that our Blessed... Well, you know, we can have two... There are two currents here, all right? right. Some people say, well, St. Joseph, all right, he believed that Our Lady had sinned. And so that's why he wanted to leave her. But that's, that's wrong, all right? That is more, let's say, that would be a Protestant outlook, a Protestant way to interpret the words here of Holy Scripture. Because the Catholic interpretation is that St. Joseph, when he saw our Blessed Mother with child, all right, and he realized he was not the father, he was humbled because he knew that our Blessed Mother, she was a saint. She was holy she was immaculate. So he knew that she could not have sinned. And so in front of such a miracle, St. Joseph said, well, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to have such a holy wife. This is beyond me. This is, this is, this is divine. It's something beyond my com comprehension. I don't understand, but it's because it's something much greater than I. I don't, I don't have the and capacity. There are a number of fathers of the church who support this. Exactly this, that St. Joseph at no moment doubted. Yes. That Monsieur Jean, in his book, um, St. Joseph, who really knows him, Monsieur Jean explains this very, very, very yeah. well. Yeah, very based beautiful. on the church fathers, based on theologians. Yes. I remember a very beautiful argument. One of the various arguments he shows to prove this thesis this, is that St. Joseph, when the angel appears to him in his dream, he does not say, Joseph, do not suspect, or Joseph, do not doubt, because he did not suspect Our Lady. He did not doubt Our Lady. He said, Joseph, do not fear. He saw that it was something much greater than him. Do not fear. In taking Mary for your spouse. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. The Brother same John, words beautiful. That the angel said to Mary, do not be afraid. Do not, do be, not afraid. be afraid. Beautiful, you see. Because it was something higher. She herself was afraid of being the mother of God. Yes. And St. Joseph was afraid to take Mary as his wife because she's, he saw something divine in her. Yeah. You know, she's, she's divine. So I'm, I'm just human, you know, like, so, so that's why he feared. And so that's why he, he had decided to leave. You know, he had already made a plan. I'm going to go to sleep. Now, look how, how St. Joseph, you know, normally when you see something such a, like that, you know, you, you get nervous and you get uh, upset and, and you, you can't sleep that night, right? Well, St. Matthew says that St. Joseph went to sleep. He went to, well, that means that, you know, this, is, he, this was in peace. So he, it, wasn't, it wasn't a scandal for St. Joseph, yeah. you see? He didn't see Our Lady being with child as something scandalous. He saw something sacred. So Which he's is said, actually, Father, one of the proofs that um, St. Joseph's, um, that his soul was in complete order because the passions were subjected to his will, which was subjected to reason, which was obedient to faith and fortified by charity. Just like when God created Adam, he had the gift of integrity. 
it's certain that St. Joseph had this gift of integrity in such a high degree because to be able to, like you said, for his passions not to revolt at that moment, right. for him to be able to go to sleep with peace of soul, yeah, exactly, well, he was entirely in tune with the will of God. All of us who are conceived in original sin, we don't work like that. As human beings, we know how... <laughs> Even if you yes. want to, your body doesn't obey. Yeah. Your mind can say, no, I need to sleep now. I know that this is something. Mm. You're, you're, you're able to sometimes even reason correctly, but your body doesn't obey. Your passions. That's your one passions of the, yeah. revolt. After Adam's sin, all of us suffer this consequence. So actually something very beautiful in the life of St. Joseph. So one that more argument of in favor of the Immaculate Conception of yeah. St. Joseph. One more that argument. Yeah, beautiful. That so, and that's when the angel appeared to him in his dream. So St. Joseph had already made up his mind. He had made some plans. All right, he was going to leave Our Lady. He didn't want to create a scandal. He, he respect her, so he, he wanted to leave. And that's when the, the angel appeared to him in his dream. And then St. Joseph changed his plans. He was flexible. He submitted. And so he took Mary as his wife and the child as his son. So this is, these, these, are, these are things that we should ponder upon. Yeah. You know, when, when we make plans in our lives, when we um, have ideas and, and we start to putting them into practice, but then all of a sudden, God intervenes we have to learn to be flexible, just like St. Joseph. Miracle Father. We have to learn to surrender to God's will. Otherwise, we're going to fight against God. Otherwise, we're going to walk against God. Otherwise, we're going to just uh, try to, 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 um, to, um, to bring down, you know, the, the wall of God's will, and, and, and that will make our life unbearable. We even end up blaming God when things go wrong. Right? That's when... Yeah. That, that's when Yes, revolt starts to I think appear. that's one of the signs of somebody who's always victorious. In Joseph, like we said before, his whole life was a victory after another. He never failed. He's always protecting us. There we go. One of the signs of somebody who always wins is that in God's hands, he's, so to speak, weak. He's, so to speak, soft. He, God can do what he wants with him. But when the person's like this, against the world and against the demon, the person has a strength with yes. which nobody else has. And and this, uh, you know, another pious belief, um, this this flexibility of Saint Joseph and this submission of Saint Joseph to the God's will is is due in part because of his consecration, because he learned to consecrate himself to God. We could say through the hands of Mary, yeah. through the hands of his wife, because he he saw in her such such holiness, such sacrality, such superiority. He, he, he perceived this in her, that he, he kind of consecrated himself. Although he was the head of the family, he would submit to his wife. And that is a sign of the true head, you know, one of the proofs of true gra grandeur on this earth, is when the person can be entirely submissive to God. But St. Joseph went to God through the hands of Mary, like all of us. I mean, we do a consecration to Our Lady. Right. But the, the more seriously we take a consecration to Our Lady, the more we give ourselves to her, the greater we are. And the close of the other Saint Joseph, and I guess, and 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 that's how we acquire his peace. That's yeah. how we acquire his serenity. That's how we acquire the capacity to go to sleep at night and to sleep with the angels. Yeah. To give what exactly is this consecration to Our Lady? Well, I guess there's actually a course. Yeah. So our brothers. So I guess it's not the topic of our. Of course, the this podcast is for the slaves of Our Lady. So I'm sure most of you have heard of it before. Many of you have done this consecration before, but. The same consecration that we believe that St. Joseph did to Our Lady, where he gave, gave himself entirely in, in her hands, a consecration of love. We heralds, we offer this consecration through the method taught by St. Louis Marie de Mont Maria Grignot de Montfort, whom Brother Morgan mentioned before. And there'll be a link to this consecration in the description of this video. So if you've not done so, please take a look. It's a free online course with a very beautiful consecration in the end. When I, when I made my consecration, one of the priests said that Quoting St. Louis, he said that St. Louis says that the easiest way to get to Jesus, to arrive at heaven, is through the hands of Our Lady. <laughs> so if we want an easy way to go to heaven, yeah. it's, a, it's a good place to start. And, and it's actually changing the lives of many people. Many people comment and come and thank, thank us for this consecration, saying that it's, their lives have been completely changed because now they have Mary in the center of their lives, our Lord Jesus yeah. Christ in the center. St. Joseph's example, I mean, if he thought that was the best way to go to God, was through Our Lady, was and the grace that he received in his life was because of her. Hmm. I think there's no reason to 
But Father, it's almost time, unfortunately, for us to finish. Oh dear, I would like just uh, maybe just say one one yes, last Father, word. Saint Teresa of Avila. Yeah. Saint Teresa of Avila, doctor of the church, mm-hmm. great, the great Saint Teresa. All right, I have a beautiful quote here from her. All right, um, speaking about Saint Joseph, Saint Teresa of Avila had a lot of devotion to Saint Joseph, and so Saint jo- Saint Teresa goes and says here, "I do not remember that I have ever asked anything of him which he has failed to grant." Incredible. So this is, he has a certain power to grant um, graces, to obtain help from the divine infant Jesus, the from our Lord. The fact of him being so pure, so free from sin, making him, so to speak, omnipotent before God. Whatever he asks, he's so pure that God is, so to speak, obliged to give him because of his purity. Exactly, because of his purity. And this is why, another quote here from another saint, St. Francis of the Sals, also doctor of the church, St. Francis of Sals, he goes and, um, and, and, and he says that he considers um, it definite, okay, it's a certainty, St. Francis de Sales says that St. Joseph was taken body and soul into heaven at his death. That's why there's no first class relics of St. Joseph. Have you ever heard of first class relics of St. Joseph? No. A piece of his bone. And some. No. <laughs> so, so this is why St. Francis, the doctor of the church, said he, he therefore was raised body and soul. One more argument, therefore, to think and to believe, well, St. Joseph, therefore, was conceived without sin. He's so holy. He's so special. All right. He's only below our Blessed Mother Mary. Father, this is one of the reasons the fathers of the church give to justify the assumption of our leading to heaven. They say that because she was conceived without original sin, since her body was never I'm sorry, since her body was never subject to sin, mm-hmm. it was not fitting that this body should receive the punishment of sin. That was decay after death. So because this body was never conceived or did not have sin, it had to be taken up to heaven. If St. Francis says that, that's another reason to believe in his immaculate conception. There we go. His body also never had the least taint of sin. It had to be taken up to heaven after his death. So these are all beautiful beliefs. Let's continue believing in these beautiful, pious thoughts. And let's be maximalistic in everything with yeah. regards to the Holy Family, with gar- regards to um, to St. Joseph. And, and let's pray to St. Joseph that he continues to um, inspire us, to make us grow in, 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 in love, uh, for Jesus through the hands of Mary uh, as good um, devotees of, of our Blessed Mother Mary. And let's ask St. Joseph to protect us, to protect the, our families, to protect the church, and therefore to also help us all right, better understand um, the, the love that God has for each and every one of us. Beautiful fun. Amen. We're going to give us a final blessing. Mm-hmm. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God, through the intention of our Blessed Mother Mary and St. Joseph, bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Salve Maria. Salve Maria. Salve Maria.